guys, it's Elise from My Cupcake Addiction and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cake in disguise that looks like a bowl of cereal but is in fact cake and we're throwing in a sneaky little illusion effect to make it look like this carton of milk is actually pouring milk down onto that cereal bowl and just suspended in midair. Today's video is part of a collaboration with some other awesome YouTube channels where we're all taking Cinnamon Toast Crunch and coming up with some really cool recipes to celebrate Cinnamon Toast Crunch's 30th birthday. In keeping with the cinnamony theme, the cake that I'm using today is our Cinnamon Spice Cupcake Recipe and I'm pairing that with our Cinnamon Spice Buttercream Frosting. I'll leave a link to the Cinnamon Jelly Donut Cupcake video down below which is where you will find the recipes for both the cake and the frosting. I've got some red candy melts and of course I've got some cinnamon toast crunch cereal. I've got a little bit of white fondant, two 18 gauge flour wires which you can buy at most cake decorating stores. This one here is a balloon stick, it's got the little plastic cup on the end and you can get this at most crafty type party supply stores. I've got a serrated knife, a spoon, a butter knife, a small spoon, a paintbrush, I've got a little bit of plain water and I've got some cotton wool balls. I've also got an empty clean and dry milk carton. Try and pick one with a relatively nice looking pattern on it and don't get the cheapest one on the market or it'll make your cake look cheap. I've got some non-stick spray and I'm baking my cake and making my shell stay in a silicone pudding bowl. So this is basically just a flexible silicone bowl. I've also got a cake board and my cake board I have covered in fabric today. So normally I would ice these or leave them plain, but I just bought some nice red checkered fabric, sticky taped it straight onto that square board. So I've got that really nice kind of tablecloth look for underneath my cake. To prepare your pudding bowl and bake your cake, you just want to give it a really nice generous spray with either a non-stick spray or you can just grease it with some butter. Scoop your cake mix in and it should take the entire cake mix and you want to pop that into a moderate oven for about 40 minutes or so until a skewer inserted in the middle comes out clean. While your cake's cooling, clean and dry your silicone pudding bowl and then you want to scrape in about half of your red candy melts. I use nearly a whole packet here. Use your spatula just to scrape the melts all the way up the side of the bowl to do a thin, even coat. Pop that one off into the fridge to set and then we're going to give it a second coat. So what you want is two nice thin even coats rather than one big thick chunky coat. When your first coat set, scoop in almost all of the remainder of your candy melts but just set a little bit aside because we're going to need that to do a little bit of gluing. You need to work quite quickly on this second coat because it will start to set when it comes into contact with that cold candy melt and pay particular attention to making sure you've got plenty of chocolate up around the top rim of your bowl. That one goes back into the fridge to set and when your cake is completely cool it's time to do some carving. So I find with these larger deeper cakes I always get sort of a crispy edge or a browned edge and I like to carve that off. Use your serrated edge knife and just cut all the way along the top. You basically want to take off any golden or crispy edges all the way around the top, the bottom and also the sides. You should be left with just lovely golden sponge so now you want to take your knife again and take the whole bowl you want to cut it in the middle horizontally straight across as straight as you can get it. Once it's set to remove your bowl you need to peel the top edges of your silicone away from that candy melt to kind of release the suction and then this can be a little bit tricky you need to roll the silicone bowl down around the outside of the chocolate and then your bowl will just pop out. Try to touch the outside of the bowl as little as possible to minimise fingerprints but if you do get some on there just use a clean dry tissue just to brush over them and you'll be able to neaten them up. With all of your prep done it's time to get decorating so take your board and some of those reserved candy melts and if you did happen to use all of your candy melts you can just melt a little bit of white or dark chocolate. Place a little blob on the board and then take your candy melt bowl and stick it directly down. Let that completely set before spooning in a couple of generous tablespoons of your buttercream frosting and then use your spatula just to sort of swipe the frosting up the sides of the bowl. Slide your two wires directly inside the hollow end of that balloon stick. You may need to trim them off a little bit so they fit really neatly inside and this is just going to give us a bit of extra stability. Scrape out a little bit of that buttercream frosting so that you're looking at sort of a little hole of just that straight candy melt without the frosting on it. And then you want to scoop in another spoonful of your melted red candy melt. Stick the balloon stick cup facing down directly to the bottom of that candy melt bowl and then pop it off into the fridge for 5 or 10 minutes to let that candy melt seal completely set before you go any further. Once it's set you can take the bottom layer of your bowl shaped cake and slide it straight down over that balloon stick so the balloon stick pierces it through the middle. 
Nestle it firmly in the base of the bowl. It should have like a little buttercream frosting bed to settle into. Use your spatula just to apply a nice little coat of frosting and spread it evenly before adding your second layer of cake, once again piercing the cake with the stick straight through the middle. Take a little bit of that buttercream frosting now and you just wanna coat the top completely, making sure that you're sort of pressing the cake down as you do it and getting that frosting into all of the edges so your cake doesn't have anywhere where it's going to dry out. Once frosted, you wanna take your cinnamon toast crunch and just start positioning it mainly around the outer circumference. Don't put any of it really close to that balloon stick yet because we still need to do our milk illusion effect. To create your illusion effect, you want to roll like a thick sausage of your white fondant. Don't worry too much if it's not particularly neat, but just trim off the ends so you don't have any big sort of fat knobbly ends on either side. Take your sausage with fondant now and you want to slide your balloon stick straight through the middle. So you're kind of feeding it on without actually cutting it or anything. You're really just feeding that balloon stick up into your fondant sausage. Once the fondant's on, you can tear off any excess at the top and then I just use my fingers to kind of drag sections of the fondant down, giving it a bit of texture and making it look like gushing milk. And then you want to take just another little section, whatever you've cut off, and just sort of fashion it with your hands into a little bit of a disc. Once you've got the disc shape, just Pull it out randomly. You want this to look like a little bit of a paint splatter and then cut it in half with your knife. Make a little indent with your finger just in the center and you kind of want to join those two halves together around the outside of your balloon stick. Stick a couple of pieces of cinnamon toast crunch underneath the little flaps of your disc to make it look like that milk splashing back up as it hits the bowl. Take another little ball of that white fondant and just rock one end of it between your fingers to make like a little teardrop shape. This is supposed to look like a milk droplet. And then you want to use two of those to cover the seams where you've joined your little milk splash back together around that balloon stick and make a couple of extra little ones that you can kind of splash around in your cinnamon toast crunch. Finally, it's time to add the milk. So you want to take all of those cotton balls and you really want to stuff this milk container full as you can of cotton wool balls. Once you've got it stuffed there, it's gonna be what holds the stick in place once it's inside. So take it, find the best angle and your balloon stick will probably have a natural lean to it. So try and go on that same side that the balloon stick is leaning to. And then just shove the milk carton straight onto that fondant balloon stick. You'll sort of feel the fondant find its place in there and all that cotton wool will let it in and then we'll sort of hold it in place. Once your milk carton's on, you can take a regular spoon and just stick it straight into the side of the bowl because no one can eat cereal without a spoon. So there you've got your awesome Cinnamon Toast Crunch inspired cereal bowl illusion cake. If you want to see more really cool outside the box Cinnamon Toast Crunch inspired recipes, make sure that you click on one of these videos and check out some of the other awesome recipes. As always, thanks very much for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction.